We are live. Hello, well. Hello, Brendan. Hello, Nicolette. Hello, everyone. I'm um, I'm dressed as a cowboy, but I just noticed looking at myself in this thing that I've got an AirPod in, so I'm like your modern day cowboy. <laughs> I love you it. Know, I'm a, I'm an advanced type. <laughs> it's amazing. What are you doing? I am doing conscious horse, conscious rider facilitator training at the moment. And it's amazing. Um, I remember doing this class actually years ago and I learned so much from it. Cause one of the things for me is Gary said forever, he said, everything I've learned, I've learned from a horse. And I was like, what, like, what, what are you talking about? And I never got it until I started riding horses and started being around them. But in this conscious horse, um, training is there's so much that um when you're willing to be present with the horse that they show you about yourself and it's just been i cannot recommend it enough it's been awesome wow, wow. yeah so that's what i'm doing so you're looking like a cowboy like it yeah <laughs> and i just got to do this thing we just did this thing i know this is not about me riding horses but i have to talk about it anyway um we just did this thing in the in the arena of riding this horse bareback and oh my god what an experience to be with a horse without a saddle wow it was so cool wow um oh my god hold on let me put pull the all the comments that can you see the, the comments now i can but they're in they're going to be in hungarians i'm just gonna yeah. guess what you guys are saying what? yeah no no no. i mean many people speak english speaks english so it's, it's gonna be fine um so we have so we have to say that before we start so we have a hungarian translation and you guys can find the zoom link below i'm gonna tell this in hungarian also So, so azt jöttök mindenki, üdvözlünk benneteket itt a um, Brendónak közös beszélgetésünkön, hogy ha szeretnétek, ha nem tudtok angolul, és szeretnétek magyar tolmácsolást, akkor megtaláljátok az Zoom linket, ahol a sajnálat az Ubrecki Anna hangját hallhatjátok. Illetve ezen kívül van német tolmácsolás, és ennek a linkjét is megtaláljátok itt alul. Úgyhogy köszi, hogy itt vagytok. Brendan! Oh my God! It's, it's, it's only... It's not too long that you're coming to Hungary! I know. I, I, I just actually realized that because I was like, I need to get organized. I'm actually going to be in Hungary in like nine days. So wow. it's very close. Um, and I'm so excited because I, I don't know how many people have heard my, um, you know, what I've been, my life basically the last, you know, six months. Um, I haven't been facilitating and I've been going through a lot of change myself and looking at different things and This will be my first um, really back in class, like facilitating and being with people in person. So I'm like Budapest was five years ago. I facilitated my first choice of possibilities class there alone, um, oh. not alone in the room, but like on, it was my first one ever. <clears throat> and I remember it. I remember it so well because it was one of those jumping off points for me. And I remember being in the car on the way to this venue, just thinking there's no way in the world I can do this. And all of these, all of this different awareness of different things. Um, and I was just crying and, and I got into the room and <laughs> I think there was like 40 or 50 people in the room. And, and a lot of them came up to me and just went, you're going to be amazing. And they just, just supported me. And it broke, it broke some, it broke some wall that I'd had up my whole life with different things of, you know what, I doubt myself, I can't do this. And it just, it allowed me to be what I knew I could be with these people. And that's one of the things I love about facilitating. One of the things I love about access is we are all so different. We're all so unique. And I don't know about you, but I did a lot of my life, um, looking to other people going, oh, I should be like that, or I should be like this person, or they're better at me than this. So it was always comparison. It was always judgment. And walking into that room that day, it was just, it was such a beautiful thing when I, um, I actually started the class with, I sat down 
to start this choice of possibilities class. And I just kept crying for like the first 10 minutes of class and everybody just sat there just like they, I don't know if what was going on in their world, whether they were just willing to have three days with me on the stage crying or whether they were like, he'll talk eventually, maybe, <laughs> but it didn't matter. And that was the thing. It didn't, it didn't even matter. It was this, um, different experience not only for me energetically but for everybody in the room to just go oh i can just be here you know i can just be me i don't have to try and get this class right i don't have to get my question right i don't have to get everything solved that i think i need to get solved we're just here together and it was oh man i will never forget that wow i really like this about you by the way um, I remember I took my first class with you uh, at the castle. It was a COP. Uh -huh. I asked the, I asked my question, and I, you just always um, so vulnerable and just you know what you feel. You are like present with the person that that you who you you who you facilitate. Thank you, and you know it's one of the gifts that I see in you also. And that's been, um, you know, that though, too, it's such a, it's so easy to see something like that in somebody else. Cause I do it all the time. I'm like, you know, I've got some pretty phenomenal people in my life, you included. And, and it's like, you look to somebody and you're just like, oh my God, they're just so amazing. And they're so kind and they're just so whatever that is, but it, it's more, more of an awareness of an energy of who they are than a descriptive, um, validation of them but what we don't get is if you can see that in somebody else you are that too but we mm. are the last person on this planet that we acknowledge you ever know that <laughs> notice that about yourself or it's like you know you're great but i'm stupid <laughs> i never did that before <laughs> wow I, know, right? I love and it it's like and one of the mm. things and i'm still hey i Full disclosure with this one, I ain't even close to getting to a point where I'll acknowledge the brilliance about me. Hmm. Not even close. Wow. Um, do you do you want to share a little bit about your journey in the past six months? So would you like to share something? And whatever you want, right? Like, um, sure. I mean, what did you go through and how are you right now and because i love your new energy like I, it's so cool like you are so like you are not different that you used to be but you are so different so it's like it's a weird thing it's like i'm like oh you are still that person who is really present with others and and kind but at the same time and you're just yeah you're like so different it's just so interesting to me so you can feel that something has changed but would you like to share yeah. something? And, well, I am. Um, so I started Access 12 years ago. And, you know, and I was at a point in my life where I just had enough. And I came along to Access and things just started changing. Like I remember my first class with Gary Douglas. He said, um, your life is where it is right now based on every choice you've ever made. And I was like, what? What? You know, I thought my whole life was a what everybody else had done to me. I was a victim to it. And so I, you know, I started access then and things started to change. And then I um I still had many places in my world that I wasn't willing to see. Many limitations in my world that I wasn't willing to be honest with myself about. And so over the years, you know, it's one thing to like once you create this secret in your world which i had done and the thing i a big one i did it with was alcohol um you know i i always knew i'm an alcoholic and i always knew that i was i always knew there was something with that and i was like well, i don't want to look at it i don't want to look at the the fact that i have that much awareness that alcohol is the only way that i can get away from it and you know and so over the years, like I started facilitating choice of possibilities classes five, five, five or so years ago. And um, man, was that a gift. I, well, 
to facilitate those classes. Wow. And, you know, and even with that, it's like I would get to points in my world facilitating where I would open up to something that was so undefinable and so big and that willingness to walk through it and walk into that new space of possibilities. Oh, look at that. We called this new possibilities. <laughs> I mean, um, but, but that willingness to walk into it and actually become it and be it was something that I always bought from, something that I always, you know, would, would, would choose it to a degree, but not to be everything that I am. And so six months ago, after being seven months sober, um, I drank, you know, and I had a relapse that was massive. 12 days I drank for, and um, it's funny, I've never actually talked about this, especially on a Facebook Live, never talked about it in this way. Thank but you. I, um, I also, what's the point in hiding it, you know? Um, but so I did this, and I basically got to, to another point, another end point in my life where I had built an image of myself to, um, to, deliver to the world so that I could have control over what other people saw me as. And it got to a point and I didn't even, I mean, cognitively, I didn't even see it coming, but energetically I knew that my world was imploding. And, you know, so I, this is what went on six months ago. And, and I really had to have a look at myself. I really had to have a look at, okay, is this the person that I desire to be in the world? Mm -hmm. You know, if I could, I mean, you know, I could show up and everybody could love me and, you know, and people could think I'm amazing and I facilitate COPs and, you know, Brendan's this some conscious creature. No, you know, that's that exclusion that we create with everything when we do image, you know, and I'd gotten to a point for me where I had to look at it and go, you know what, enough. And so with this, I will say, because... And in talking about it, it brings up different things in all of our worlds because we all tend to have this thing of having one of our main priorities or desires in life is to be liked by others. Hmm. You know, let me let me be what you need me to be so that you'll receive me. And what we do in that is we eliminate everything we are. And so for me, this last six months has been a, Oh, it, it has been a relearning of, I want to say a relearning of myself. It's that, mm -hmm. but it's also a relearning of access and every single thing it stands for. Every mm -hmm. single thing that it is, it's been a relearning of that because I got to a point even for me where I was taking access for granted, taking consciousness mm -hmm. for granted, taking my awareness for granted. Mm -hmm. And it just, it, it's not the way to create a future that's going to have these new possibilities that we're talking about. So it's just, um, you know, this has been my journey. So I'm really looking forward to facilitating again, um, you know, and just being honest about yeah. everything, being honest about, about what it is to be you. And that's what I'm interested in. And, and, I'm actually excited too because I'm facilitating my first ever being you class in Budapest, being you intro that we're going to do um, on the night two of of this foundation class. So it's consciousness is a journey of epic proportion, and it and it is one that never shows up the way you think it's going to. And the more we are willing to function from no judgment and be out of judgment with ourselves, the more that we can actually allow the universe to be the guide to which we can create a possibility in every moment, not that we have to control it in order to maintain our image. Mm -hmm. And when you begin to, and I, I say begin because this for me is, I begin in each moment with this, I'm still, you know, I still see moments where I try and get it right, but it's like, but 
in me looking at this and even talking about the stuff that's been going on in my world, what I hope is that people can actually get the freedom to look at what's going on in their world mm. with honesty with themselves, but also um, the recognition that with this, even the choices that you make that you think are the most fucked up thing you've ever done, like me six months ago, <laughs> I when you're willing to see it as the choice that it is, you allow yourself to have the value of it, which means mm -hmm. that you'll start, you'll begin to recognize that there's a gift in everything that we choose if only we're willing to be honest about it. Mm -hmm. And so that for me, it's like, you know, people look at it now and go, well, and I'm sorry I'm talking a lot, but I just want to get this bit across because it's like people from the outside it would have looked like wow brendan's like throwing his whole life away well yeah in i can see how it would look that way but for me now i recognize the gift of that new beginning you know in the gift in doing it the only way at the time that i knew how to and you know one way for me to get out of image is shatter it completely <laughs> you know which is what i did i went oh image let me shatter that thing um <laughs> You know, so I did, and it's like the thing that the thing that always made access such a a gift in my world, even though I didn't understand it, was it was always about empowering me to know what I know. It was mm -hmm. never about the answer, and it didn't matter what it took for me to get there. It was always welcomed, you know, and that's the big difference with access is it's. Oh, man, like, what a what a gift to have something that is there to kind of be that thing that, like, is the support for you in whatever it takes to get to what it is that you know about you, that you know that you are here for, and that's like, man, I tell you, that's that is an interesting journey. I I. You know, I recognize for you too, and I've heard you talk about stuff. And I'd love to hear about that too, because we've all, like I said before, we're all so different, and we all have such a different and unique way of talking about how yeah, how it's contributed to us. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, um, <laughs> I think we should share our friendship. It's just so weird. So I. <laughs> <laughs> you send me an, a voice message uh, about you were coming to Budapest. And I was like, yeah, cool. Like, let's have a chat. And so we had an hour conversation and we realized, oh, my God, <laughs> like I know you forever. Right. And um, and yeah, I think th this is what I feel. I know you forever because my my story is really similar to yours because I went through the same thing. It's 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 been um four years now, four and a half years, when I got into the accident, um, the motorbike accident. And in one night, my whole life has changed. I, the next morning I woke up and I was a completely different person. And everything I thought about myself, I realized it's not me. And the life that I had up until then, I was like, whose life is this? Like, what is this? And I remember um, I woke up the next morning, my mom came into the room and I used to be a hairdresser and, and she was like, hey, you have to call your clients, tell them um, you are not available for a while. I'm like, I'm not calling them. I don't care. <laughs> and she's like, you can't do this. You don't have money. You have to go back to work. I'm like, yeah, but I'm not going to be a hairdresser anymore. And she's like, you are crazy. And I just, that was the very first time. I didn't know anything about access or anything about anything, like consciousness. It was just like my knowing that my life is not going to be the same anymore. I don't know what it's going to look like. And it was so weird because I'm telling you, I made more money by being home for a year because I couldn't move. So I was in bed. Um, I, I had more money than before. And I was just shocked. I'm like, what is this? Like, I'm not working, but my life is nicer than it used to be. So I had a car because my neighbor gifted it to me. One day she just showed up and she's like, 
uh, here's a car, car key. I'm like, I can't drive. My leg is broken. She's like, yeah, but this is not manual. I'm like, oh, thank you. And then everything just fell into my lap. And I was just shocked. I'm like, oh, my God. And that was the point where question came into my word. And then, and then, and then, and then the information about the access bars showed up. And then I, I met Andras, my mentor, you know him. And, yeah. and then, and then think, the things started just change. And I realized, oh my God, like everything that I think about my life, I, everything that I think about my past, and it's just not true. And that, that was the beginning when I started to realize, oh my God, there is so much more available here. And even today, I was just like wondering about, you know, I love my life right now. Like, it's nice. Like, if it wouldn't be bigger than this, I would be just happy. But I know this is just the beginning. This is nothing yet. Yeah. And uh, I, like, also in Puerto Vallarta, um, we had all those really cool conversations. And I, that's, this is what I like about you is when I am around you or with you, I feel like you give this you give the sense of possibilities to back, back to the people and also to me and i just feel like um oh there is more oh like yeah. all the conversation are just making my perspective and my life and everything just bigger and i really like that and That's... that is so mutual and it's like and that thing of like we we don't we very rarely acknowledge that though also like we get I don't know about you, but as a kid, even even in what I grew up with, there was always this sense of there must be more possible. That, you know, and then, but I look at over the years, the more I learned about judgment and the more I saw that, the more I came to the point of view that judgment was the source for creation, the, the, the more I eliminated that receiving that you're talking about. So it's like, because that, like, when you, you know, when you said it's like, it's like everything's just falling in my lap. Well, that's so much closer to how we actually create as beings. You know, we know when, and we, even when we don't want to acknowledge it, we know when we're going down the wrong path in life. We're going down a path of judgment. We're going down a path of um, fight, you know, and all of the stuff that we're used to. We're making the choices that are comfortable to us based on what we've learned in the past rather than being present with it and going, what do I actually know is possible? And that, I know for me, um, and in hearing you talk about it, it's like when I'm choosing what's true for me, when I'm being me, my life is miraculous. Mm. When I'm not now, it is mm. a train wreck of magnitude, mm. you know. So it's this thing I talk about and said before, that thing where Gary said, Every, everything that's showing up in your life right now and everything your life, life is, is based on every choice that you've ever made, is in that if we just got that part and we were willing to acknowledge that our choice creates everything in our lives, it puts you in the driver's seat and it gives us the power to actually, the power and the potency and the, the acknowledgement of we are the ones choosing our lives and this this sometimes can be a tough one to get because you could be going through you know money stuff you could be having you know i mean look at the world right now you could be living on planet earth going i didn't choose this well <laughs> yeah but what if you actually were willing to acknowledge the parts of it you did you know, and, and, and willing to acknowledge that your life is created based on the choices that you make. And I say it because it's the quickest way to actually change anything is the rec mm -hmm. recognition that change is only one choice away. And, you know, and it's something that, like I said, I facilitated choice of possibilities classes for five years and I'm, I'm only just even beginning to have <laughs> have an awareness of what choice actually is because even in that it's the the space from which we choose the way basically the we have so many points of view about what we are that we are not mm -hmm. that is the energy driving our life 
And it's like, so for me, for example, the biggest wrongnesses of myself was that I was an alco- that I'm an alcoholic, which has so much stigma to it. I mean, you look at that word, Jesus Christ, I need to pock and pot everybody just for bringing it up. <laughs> He's like, oh, oh, alcoholic. <laughs> I don't say that word. Alcoholic and sex. Oh my God, don't put those together. Um, but it's like, but that's that's right there is an example of the stigma attached to something which creates the the hiding from it. Well, this is all the judgments I have of alcoholics. So don't don't even get me to look at that. But in that, it owns me. Rather than okay, this is what is. And rather than it being the greatest wrongness, what if, like, so, and I'll use me for example, for an ex- as an example with this, is what if it was actually one of my greatest strongnesses? <laughs> and you would look at that and go, what? How could that be? Well, see, for me in facing it, I've gotten the strength to actually face what I used it to hide from in the beginning. So in that, it's like if we, if we're willing to, if we have the willingness to look at anything about ourselves with no judgment and recognize, okay, I could choose that or I could make a different choice, then we don't have to actually exclude anything from choice. Then we don't become the effect of it. What I'd done for 40 years, 40 plus years of my life was I avoided even looking at it. So I was being owned by it in the background. It was the thing creating my life. And it's not, you know, so it's like I, I say this because if you hear it and you're willing to look at like if you're willing to approach your basically approach yourself from this place of no judgment then you begin to see the gifts that you have with everything and and that's a bigger conversation and it, and it, and it sounds it sounds kind of um, esoteric or, or even like unfathomable, unfathomable, but it is to, to live from that much space and that much being and that much presence and that much no judgment and that much kindness for yourself and that much you being you to most people that is unfathomable. Hmm. But we all know it. We all know that it must exist or we wouldn't even be, I mean, we wouldn't even be here trying it. (laughs) Yeah. I, you know what I feel? Um, Just today I had a conversation with someone and I said that I do think that this much available, like it wasn't this much available before, ever before. Like, mm-hmm. and all these people who are looking at the news and listening to all the media, it's just, if you don't do that, it's the information is so fast and creation is so fast. Everything is just different than it used to be. Like, I see my parents and all the stories that they just told me from, you know, before the war came down. I see my life right now. Oh my God, like this is the best age I can live in. Like we have so much available right now and we just don't recognize it. And many people are focusing on what they hear, what they see, what they have been told. But I I do feel like this is how I feel about my life. It's like anything I ask for, it just shows up as if by magic. That and that part there is it's like, see, because most people would even look at that and go, Well, that's you, but that could never be me. Like, it, it's this, like, that's just unfathomable that I could ask, Well, how much? But see, when we do that, we've already excluded it. <laughs> and it's one of the things that I admire about you big time is your willingness to receive. And you just go, I'm having that. Thank you very much. Hello. 
Um, and I, I just, I think that is such a capacity and, and a true acknowledgement of your willingness to make a different choice with it. Mm-hmm. So I want to ask you about what changed where you actually, like, was it the access bars or what, what actually changed where you started noticing that you could ask for things and they would just um, would fall in your lap? So this is what I tell to people that if, um, if someone would tell me, hey, I take away any, everything that you have right now, everything, and uh-huh. then you got the choice, you would get all these tools back or you would get everything you had before back, which one you would choose? I would choose the tools because with the tools, I know now that I'm able to create everything what I had before, even more, and anything I just desire. And I have this only because from the very beginning when I met the tools, I felt like anything that I heard, it was weird and interesting. I My brain couldn't process anything. I was like, that's weird. I don't know. Especially the clearing statement was super weird to me. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, every, th- every time I went to class, I felt like I got my space back. I don't feel like I'm constructed. I, like, I, I do felt when I left, I'm like, everything is possible. Yeah, there you go. Everything is possible. But what I did, and it, I was really good at that. I'm really good at c- committing to something. Like, you know, even now with my diet and my workouts, like even in Puerto Vallarta, I was like every single morning I went to the gym at 5.45. <laughs> I did my diet. I was saying no to the cocktails, everything. I'm like, oh, I'm doing this. And so this is what I did with the tools. I heard something and I didn't trust anyone. I was like, okay, I'm going to try this. So mm-hmm. now I have so many experiences with the tools. I know they work. So if anyone would show up and tell me, hey, this is not true. Don't believe them. Like, this is stupid. This is ridiculous. I would be like, come on. I know it works because I tried. So that's what I feel is that when you have your own, so when I started to have my own experience and I was like, man, this is working. Like, wow. This, like, and I had my own, um, and my own experience basically with it, like nobody could take it away from me. And now I, that's why I say, I always say that I am like a tool, tools junkie, <laughs> that yeah. I never stop using them. And I hear something from anyone and I try them. I'm like, oh my God, I never heard about that. I, I'm going to try that. Like I had a really cool example. I, I heard something from Heather Nichols. Um, she was sharing this in her group that she was at um, Houston and she was talking at the kitchen to Gary and Gary was like, Hey, how is your business going? She's like, great. And, and um, do you got clients? And she's like, yeah. And Gary was like, Oh, that's cool. And every time when they show up, are you, are you um, grateful and asking questions? Like how does it get any better? How does it get any better than that? And she's like, yeah. Gary is like, really? She's like, but I'm not sure. And I heard this. I'm like, <laughs> wow. And I had my own, um, some online program and I had only 10 people sh- um, signed up. It, it was during COVID. And I was like, oh my God, I never thought about this way. Like, I never thought about before creating something for, for the change or for, for, for people to the change. So someone um, signed up for my course I was like, wow, I'm grateful. Like, how does it get any better than that? And then another person showed up and another person and another one. And the end of the day, we had 80 people signed up for the class. And I was, I was shocked. And so all these examples for me are like, I think this is how everything started to change, but especially the bars class, uh, the bars session. So a friend of mine, he took a bars class with Andras. And he called me, he's like, hey, I learned something. You should try this. I'm like, I'm not going to go anywhere. It's 8 p.m. My leg is broken. It's dark outside. No. And he's like, no, 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 no. You should come. I'm like, I'm not going. Yeah, you should come. So I went there and he was super excited. He was running my bars in his bed. I was, 
I don't know, he put a pillow in his lap. And so I was laying down and I couldn't remember anything just when he finished the session. And I woke up and I'm like, I just knew something has changed. And I do know that that session has changed my life. So I'm, I'm grateful forever for, to him. It's, um, it's amazing. I know your story with the I bars. Mean- Get the bars. I mean, we've tried all the other ways. You've tried judging yourself out of existence. You've tried thinking your way into existence. You've tried, we've, we've all the constructs of, of the way that everything's created here. But, but as somebody, and if you're watching this, then it's like you're probably somebody who's always been seeking something different. So the, the way that everybody else functions with things might not necessarily work for you. And, and this is like in this, having that place in you where like, I love the thing you said before about um, everything changed for you when you began to ask questions. (laughs) Such an empowerment of what you actually know. And yet, how many of us have ever been taught to truly ask a question? You know, it's always been about let me find the answer and let me be right because when I'm right, I get the, you know, I get the accolades, I get the validation, I get the, you know, whatever that is that you've decided you need rather than like, I mean, one of my things for myself right now, and I, I say this is maybe it's something that you all can ask for is to like who I am. You know, the money and the fame and the, the, the things and the, all that stuff. Yeah, that stuff's great. But that, that is all an addition to your life. So what would it be like for you if you every day more, you got more of a sense of who you actually are and you could become, mm. it didn't matter what was going on in the world because you knew you were a contribution based on your willingness to be who you are. And I know for me, I know this, that when I'm in the presence of somebody who has less judgment of themselves, somebody who's willing to be more of them, more of who they actually are and not what they've decided they need to be, I instantaneously, whether I'm choosing it or not, become more of who I actually am. And this is the way that consciousness works. And the beautiful thing about it is we have this idea that in order to You know, like I could say, even for the people listening right now, how many of you actually have a desire to change the world? Hmm. And you kind of go, you instantaneously want to go, yeah, like that lightens your world up. But then you go, well, how the hell am I going to do that? Like, what do I got to do? Like, you know, like, but it's, it's the willingness to be who you are, the willingness to be you. And, you know, so that is really the you know the beautiful thing with with consciousness is one of us is willing to be something different and the rest of us get to to have it also based on one person's choice mm. yeah there's a massive like if you if if you were even to begin to acknowledge that how much more would you like you and how much would you begin to recognize that even if like even if you 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 have those days where it's like, you know what, I'm judging the shit out of myself or I feel like the worst person in the world or I can't get my life right or I'm not creating my future and blah, 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 all of that stuff. What if, what if you didn't have to give up you for it anymore? Hmm. You know, and it's a journey. Like I said, I mean, I've been on this journey 12 years. I've been doing access and, and it's like, um, and I, I feel like I begin again every day, to be honest. I'm like, <laughs> wow, I'm like in kindergarten again. Okay, good. Same for me. I'm like, oh my God. When I, when I, it's really rare, but sometimes I get to the point where I'm like, I got this, I got this. And then yeah. the next day I realize oh my God, there is more and deeper. Like you can explore something. You can always explore something even deeper. Any tools you try, it's just amazing to me. Sometimes I'm like, oh my God, now I got it. 
And then yeah. the next day or two months later, you're like, oh, now I got it. <laughs> and it's just so fun. I love it. You know, it, you it's... You never um, get bored. You never get bored with it. Yeah, you never get bored with it. That's so true. And um, yeah, that was for me, my experience. I just can't do the same thing for too long. I get super bored. I get successful in everything I choose. And then I'm just like, bye, I'm, I'm bored. Um, but this time, it's just interesting. I'm getting more excited every day. And I don't feel like I got this. I feel like I'm always exploring something every day. And there is more and always more. And, you know, I really like uh, Chris Hughes. And he, I heard him saying this. Yeah, me too. And I heard him saying this many times is that everything is growing and expanding. Always. And he said that many times. So your bank account, it's true for your business. It's true for your life. Everything is growing and expanding always. If it's not, then ask the question like, what do I choose? What am I being? What am I not being that keeps this? Um, this big or small or, you know, not growing. And since I heard that, like it was a year ago or two, I, I can't remember. I'm like, I'm not stopping anything from growing because I know that if it's not growing, it's me who stops it. So that, just- part, that part is huge though. If it's not growing, it's me who stops it. And it's like, because, you know, everything when when you know when things aren't moving in your life there's some point of view that we have some point of view some projection or some judgment that we have that's stopping it and you know so with the tools and we have like countless tools with access but that thing that you said before about the um about the clearing statement and going what the hell is this you know i remember (laughs) the first time i heard it was when i first got my bars run and this girl was like um so do you mind if I ask you a few questions and I'll just say this crazy bunch of words? And I was like, I don't care what you do right now. Basically help. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and she did. And as soon as she'd asked me a question, I just started sobbing, you know, and then she started using this clearing statement, which is right and wrong, good and bad, pod and pock, all nine, shorts, boys, povads and beyonds. If you want to check that out, there's a awesome video at theclearingstatement.com. Um, but basically, it's the way that you can change anything. Any You can change um, anything that's stuck in your life. So with something like this, if something's not moving in your life, rather than going, this isn't moving, which is aligning and agreeing with the point of view that's stopping it to begin with, rather than that, you go, okay, so how many judgments do I have of this? everything that is, I now destroy and uncreate all that, right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pop, all nine, shorts, boys, povads and beyonds. There's just one tool that, if you used it, would start changing the, you would start changing your life. Oh, for me, it was, I didn't even understand back then. It was six years ago, I guess, when I when I went to my first foundation bars. But now I'm getting it like, the more you are willing to work with the energy and not trying to figure it out, understand it and not focusing on what you see and what it is, it's crazy. And this is what I'm getting right now. It's like, there is something that's not working for me. I'm like, okay, how can I change it energetically before I go anywhere? Like trying to talk through, like, I don't know if you guys ever had that, that you had a boyfriend or a girlfriend and you had some issue and drew, and you try to have a talk, a conversation, and it's just getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And like, okay. And then the next day you are like, okay, let's do it again. Like, hey, can we talk? And and it's just it's just even worse. Um, this time I'm like, if I have anything with anyone, I'm not going to talk through. I just go, okay, what am I being? What am I, what I have to change here? Like what if I can just shift one thing and it's going to change? And what I like, I don't know what about you, but this tool is that 
just get present with the energy or with the problem that you have and just shift it 180 degrees and just shift it again and then just shift it and just shift up until you do feel some shift in the energy. And also for me, the clearing statement, this is what it does. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to figure it out. I don't have to find the answer and the solution. It's like, bang, magic went and it just changes. You know, I I admire that about you. The is one of the things I truly do admire about you is that thing that you just said. There's there's a massive key is what am I being that's creating this? So like with you know, because we do you know that thing of we need to have a talk is well, let me show you where you're wrong, or <laughs> let me prove to you that I'm right so that you can change, so that you can be who I want you to be, so that I can control you. Know we do stupid shit, but <laughs> that um, that willingness to go, what am I being that's creating this with all of your relationships, with all yeah. of your businesses, with all of those stuff points in your life. That once again leads back to what we talked about before with each and every choice creates is your willingness to see that if something's not working for you, you're choosing it. And that was the greatest gift I got in that class I did with Gary Douglas is although I may still have run for it, run from it many times in my life. And I may, there's still certain points where I don't want to look at certain areas, but I know without a shadow of a doubt that everything in my life I have chosen, that everything that shows up in my life I am choosing. I know that without a doubt. So if I'm doing, if my life stops, I'm stopping it. You know, if I'm, if I'm receiving a lot, it's because I'm looking at where am I judging and changing that, you know? So it's, this really gives you the power to create anything that you desire when you're willing to to not be the victim anymore. I love it. And I I just love that about you, that you just go, what am I doing? What am I being that's creating this? What do I need to change? What do I need to look at? Yeah. I And what I like about myself, I should really say this out loud, is that I don't really look at other people's. I don't care what they think, what they say, what they do. And I just, and I don't, so for me, I used to be a victim because I came from a family where one of my parents, they were, um, you know, um, like abusing a little bit. (laughs) And the other person was um, like a victim of the whole thing. And I grew up, they got divorced and I grew up with the one who was the victim. So for me, the victimhood was really like, I really knew that feeling. I really knew that energy. So I came out oh, of that, that being the being the victim for everything. Yeah. Like, I don't have the money because I'm a victim. I yeah. don't have a good, great relationship. Oh, yeah, because they are bad and, you know, they're bad to me. And um, when I met these tools, I got to this point at, at some point I got to this point, I was like, okay, it's nothing to do with other people. It's me. Like I'm choosing to be a victim. Like I don't have to do that anymore. I can just change that. But that um, required me to get to the point where I was like, oh my God, I am the source of my life. Like, because before I was like waiting for people to, pay my bills, give me money, because I thought I am not able to create those things. So I always, I always wanted like a rich boyfriend or something, because that's what I heard when I was a child. Like my mom used to tell me, oh, don't worry, honey, just find a rich boyfriend. And I was like, yeah, sure. So I did that, but it wasn't working for me ever. And it's, it still kept me in the victimhood. And when I realized that, Uh, with the tools at my foundation class, I'm like, oh man, I'm choosing to be a victim here. And since then, um, when I gave it up, it was, it it gave me the biggest change so far. And since then I'm like, if anything happens to me, I know it's not happening to me, I'm creating it. And what I go to look at every time, if I feel stuck or or my life not going into the direction I, I want it to go, I'm like, 
that's my favorite question. One, what am I being or what am I not being? I think it's it's even bigger to me, like what am I choosing here or what am I doing here? Because what you are being, that I think that's the biggest key to changing everything. And yep. and I realized also before when I had no money, I was always this victim girl. Um that I was being like this small. And as I expanded and my life expanded, I realized, oh my God, changing my life is um have to be something different energetically to create a bigger life if I want to have a bigger life. That part right there. You have to be willing to be something bigger energetically if you desire to have a big life, period. You can't have a big life without being bigger energetically. And that's the thing that, we've got to get is it's like you can't you you know we've all tried that try and create a greater life by doing the same stupid shit you know or it doesn't it doesn't work you've got to be willing to be more of who you actually are if you desire to create more of a life that you truly desire to be in and that's another thing i love watching you do that it's just it's a gift yeah it it really is and it's not i mean it's not hard. It really isn't. I'm not saying it's easy. Definitely is not easy. A journey of consciousness is not one that's easy. It's one that can have a lot of ease, but is one that, that certainly has its moments of uncomfortability when you recognize that for most people, it's much more comfortable to choose judgment. Yeah. You know, so to choose and to go to fight and to do all of that stuff, it's like, to be present enough in your life to make those different choices in each moment, that is, that's the way that you, you begin to um, create the fluidity in your life, you know, but, but it, it, it has, it begins with choice. It begins with going, Oh, you know what? I'm so used to judging myself or I'm so used to being the victim. Like we've both talked about. What if I wasn't? But not just once. And this is where, you know, I've tried to do this. Well, I already chose it. I already chose it. I'm not going to be a victim. I chose it once. No, you've got to keep choosing it in every moment. I got out of judgment for one day. Yeah, well, what would it take for you to get out of it tomorrow too? Yeah. I think, you know, um, hmm. What I so we have this. Um, I don't know if you saw the comment from Alexandra. She said, I'm late, so I missed the beginning of your conversation. I have read Brendan and Simon's book of relationship. And since I always said to my boyfriend, look at him, he changed his life. <laughs> I love this. And I, I want to address something here. Um, and, and you're going to tell me your part, but what I see with you, so you are being super vulnerable with you yourself and your choices but you are not going to the victimhood mm. and then you are willing to choose something different. And I think these three things are what missing from um, many people's reality is like being vulnerable with what I am being or what I'm, what I'm doing here, because that was, I, I do have kind of like a same past like you do. I had, issues with drugs and then alcohol, a lot of alcohol for a long time. That was, I love the conversation we had in Puerto Vallarta. It's like, we look great for drinking so much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> look I'm, at like, us. I'm surprised. I'm like, wow. <laughs> look at us. You know, but I was on a fast track to killing myself with alcohol. But <laughs> Same here. Yeah, you know, but, but it is. Same and that vulnerability here. is, you know, most of us have learned to put walls and barriers up to most things, thinking that that's the way that we can, um, you know, protect ourselves or whatever, whatever we, whatever we justify it as. But each time you put up a wall to anything, you put up a wall to you, period. So that vulnerability is, you know, recognizing that the only thing that will create the safety in your life not the walls, not the barriers, not all of that. The only thing that will create the safety in your life is total commitment to you. Because then you know nothing can show up that you cannot handle. 
you know, and if, if mm. so with that, it's, I mean, if we all gave ourselves a little bit of a break, we all make stupid choices. We all do stupid shit, but it's when you hide it from yourself that you don't see the gift in it, you know, and that, that's the part for me where I'm like, you know, what, that me personally, that's where I'm like, that has to change because otherwise there is no contribution to the world. You know, even if we look at the thing with drugs and alcohol that both of you and I, you and I have had issues with, how many people have that as a secret in their world because it's such a wrongness? Oh, yeah. You know, and then you, you come out and talk about it and go, Jesus Christ, I was facilitating CFPs for five years. I now don't do that because I wasn't willing to look at me and what I was choosing. Mm -hmm. So you come out and talk about something like that. People go, oh, shit, you're actually real. <laughs> Yeah. You know, but it's like, but we are, each and every one of us is, and we're different. Each and every one of us is different. And I don't know about you, but the thing I I love seeing in the world is when somebody is willing to stand up and go, you know what, here, I'm me. Here I am. I've got my shit. I've got my good stuff. I've got my bad stuff. i got, you know, but here I am. What else is possible? Yeah. And yeah, and here I am, and I'm going to change this. <laughs> you, you're free to join me exactly. on this journey. Yeah. I, you know, I remember when the very first time I was talking about, I was really honest with um, my past that I always looked for a rich boyfriend, and I thought that um, they have to pay I don't know, my phone and my computer and traveling and stuff like that. I and love I remember, hearing all the other women's heads on this going, that's what I'm asking for. That, Rich that what happened. <laughs> you know how many messages I got? They were like, I wouldn't be able to say this out loud, not even to others but myself. I'm like, yeah, I know. I can hear you guys. But um, there is nothing to hide. Because when you don't hide it from yourself, you, you have, you have the choice to change it. You have, you got a possibility to change it. True story. Right. True story. We need to stop. Um, thinking, otherwise, you and I will just go on for hours. I know us. I know. We have, that's what I'm like. Hey, we run out of time. Um, so many people were saying like they could hear the cock in the back. It's because Brandon is at the ranch. So Brandon yes, is guys, it was real That's and true. The, the, the rooster cock a doodle doing. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Um, so hold on. So we're gonna. Um, so you're coming to Europe, actually, not just Hungary. Yep, I'm coming to Europe. I'm starting in Hungary on the. I think. Well, we've got our, we've got a buzz pop. We've got a pop that we're doing on the twenty second, a party of possibilities. Um, yeah, for, that is for, almost full. So if you want to get in on that, you better get in quick. Um, yeah. So we should explain what foundation. That. Yeah. What's so before that? we go to your foundation, we have to explain what is pop. It's a party of possibilities. Basically, you get to experience the online class of Global Access Bars Day, but you get to experience it with us in a room with a lot of other amazing people. Yep. So that is on the 22nd on the afternoon because we're going to go Houston time. So in Hungary, that's 4.30 p.m. on the afternoon. We got some space, I guess, um, 10 more spots available and three kits. So that's it. Um, if you guys want to come, you have to uh, register for the bars class and then to the pop. This is how it works. And then the next morning... We've got my foundation class, and um, I'm really looking forward to facilitating that. So you are most welcome. If you've done the bars, you're most welcome to join us for the foundation class, and that is four days that will, whew, four days that will change your life if you desire it. So you are most yeah. welcome at that and and invited to that. And then I have a body class coming up. I think that starts on the 28th, a three day access body class. Um, so I'm going to be in Budapest for two weeks. You'll see me somewhere, I, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so Brandon has his foundation class. It's going to be in Budapest on the Margaret Island in a really beautiful venue. 
and then the week after like uh, no it's it's basically you have one day off the 27th and then 28th yeah your three-day yeah. body class there is a prereq for the body class or no prereq for the body class? yeah the prereq for that body class is foundation Awesome. So you could just come, you get to, up, then the yeah, foundation, you, and then the yeah. body class. You could spend two weeks with me if you, if you like me that much. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. And then you're going to Germany. And then I'm going to Cologne for another three-day body class, the following weekend, which is the fourth of uh, November until the sixth. So that would be awesome to see that. Too. Wow. Awesome. Um, I know you have to go back to class. Thank you for um, joining us today. And Thank you. This, um, this conversation, I love it. It was amazing. Um, awesome. you. Yeah. Thank you guys for joining us. And I hope you all find uh, found the translation Zooms. Um, and two more things to share. Um we're going to post this video on YouTube as well. I don't know, Brandon, do you want me to send you the video? Would you like to share it on your YouTube channel? I don't know. Sure. You don't know. Okay. We're so, going to ask Mel. She's the boss. You know, she okay. knows all that stuff. <laughs> okay. So maybe you guys can find it on Brandon's YouTube also, but you can go to mine and you can find it and watch it later if you wish. And thank you for joining us. Good night in Europe and have a good day in the United States. Thank you, everyone. Bye. What else is possible? <laughs> Bye. Bye.